uh, remain, or I would say go back, on the top of the international political agenda. I think this is the first priority we share. Many of you have said it very uh, well. And also to mobilize uh, the only sustainable effort we can have, which is a shared one. Some of you have talked about the risk of a donor's fatigue. In the European Union, we know this well. But we also know which is the antidote to this donor's fatigue, and that is sharing more across the globe efforts to make efforts that in the region are done sustainable. Because we know very well that the pressure becomes uh, higher and higher uh, as time goes by. And uh, this means that we don't only need to add resources, but we need to multiply resources as time goes by. So uh, I believe that uh, uh, we have a shared analysis of the situation, of the needs uh, of the things we need to mobilize, uh, with a special focus on uh, uh, the fact that uh, regional responses uh, in a coordinated manner uh, are the first um, responses that need to be supported and sustained from the global community. And in this respect, I think that uh, um, we all agree, I heard many uh, saying that uh, the strong support uh, for the Quito process is clear. Uh, I believe this uh, uh, will be something that we will manage to show uh, already from the next meeting in, in Bogota. Um, I also believe that uh, the establishment uh, of uh, 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 a group of friends of the Quito process uh, can be a helpful accompanying instrument to show that uh, we are not creating any parallel track, uh, but we are trying to join efforts in supporting the region in finding solutions uh, for uh, a crisis that is not only a Venezuelan uh, problem, even if the roots are clearly identified uh, as political roots inside Venezuela, um, but uh, it's a crisis that requires a regional and global um, answer, and not only on the humanitarian front, as many of you have mentioned. This was not a pledging conference, still, I believe we need to look at uh, uh, also the positive uh, uh, commitments that have been uh, expressed and announced in these two days, uh, even if, uh, um, again, it was not the main purpose of the conference, uh, it's very much welcomed. Uh, and so, indeed, and so um, if we count it right, I believe that on top of the additional 30 million euros uh, coming from the European Union itself, uh, we heard from different uh, delegations uh, yesterday and today approximately 120 million euros additional resources that can be mobilized in the coming uh, uh, days and weeks. And I believe this, for not being a pledging conference, is quite <laughs> remarkable. Uh, I've also noticed that uh, some of you mentioned the idea of having a proper pledging conference uh, in the future. I believe that this can be kept as a possible track to be developed uh, and uh, uh, in, um, in a coordinated manner to be considered. Uh, but I think, again, that uh, uh, we can consider this uh, uh, already as, uh, as an important success, not only in terms of uh, uh, attendance for this conference, but also in terms of results. Uh, let me also say that uh, uh, I believe that this convening power that we've mobilized um, across the region, in Europe and far away, with different uh, players uh, gathering in these two days in Brussels uh, is also the key to success. Uh, countries uh, from the region, first and foremost, and I want to thank them all for their presence here uh, and also for the work they're doing every single day. Um, but also uh, European member states, European countries that are not EU member states, countries uh, from all across the world, from Far East uh, Asia uh, to Gulf countries, uh, international uh, agencies, UN agencies, obviously, uh, first and foremost, uh, different ones, not only uh, the two that are sitting uh, to my right and to my left, uh, international financial institutions, uh, civil society, NGOs, private sector. I believe that this mix covering the entire globe and covering different aspects of our mobilization can give us, in the coming months, the right impetus to try and fill this gap between the needs and uh, the mobilization that we can put in place. Still, and always keeping in mind that uh, this is a necessary work uh, that will need to be complemented by our continuous work on the political track but one cannot wait for the other and vice versa. And so I think that today we've done an important uh, common work together and uh, very much looking forward um, to continue working together, in particular with the countries uh, in the region that have all our support. And one last word of thank you from my side before I give them the floor. 
uh, to uh, Antonio and to Filippo, to their teams, uh, because uh, uh, this has been for me um, an yet another excellent demonstration of how the European Union and the UN system manage to work together when we have clear objectives in mind, which is always the case, when we have a time pressure, which is also always the case, <laughs> when we have an urgency uh, in terms of uh, addressing issues, which is also always the case. But this is also the positive side of what I see, uh, that uh, um, there are um, instruments of multilateralism uh, that, uh, when there is political will, uh, can deliver uh, for um, a good uh, result. Uh, I should also uh, mention that uh, um, we would have uh, uh, a joint uh, communique by the co-chairs, of which we take responsibility, but that reflects uh, the content of the discussion uh, we've had in this uh, two days, and we will also present this to the press uh, um, in uh, uh, the coming uh, um, minutes. But with that, uh, I will leave the last uh, word to um, my two co-chairs, you, 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 you decide internal UN uh, order, Antonio Filippo. Thank you very much. If you insist, you see, UNHCR and IOM work so well together that we fight for who speaks last. Um, so anyway, thank you, Federica, and uh, thank you all for being here today. I don't have much to add. Federica summed it up very, very well, as usual. But I would like to start these brief remarks by thanking you on behalf of uh, UNHCR, I think I can say on behalf of the United Nations for having pulled together this very important meeting at such short notice. You spoke about urgency. We know that you not only face every day a lot of other emergency situations, but you are yourself uh, at the end of your tenure as a member of the Commission, and uh, in fact, up to a few days ago, as you said yesterday, we thought this would be, in fact, your last, one of your last acts, the last. as uh, the last act as the High Representative. Now, uh, I think this is a testimony to your commitment to uh, 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 international cooperation and to cooperation of all the actors you've mentioned in order to address crisis. So thank you very much for that. And thank you not only for this, but for all that you have done during your tenure uh, with us and uh, in other ways to help uh, the world get a little better amidst so many crises. Thank you, Federica, from the bottom of our hearts. And may I add that it is proud to have a compatriot that uh, occupies such an important place. Um, a few uh, comments. I would uh, like to just uh, uh, underline again uh, what many of you have uh, mentioned, that it is important to look at the root causes. We are concerned by the sustainability of the response. And I think that uh, our friends from host countries, whom I also want to thank, are even more concerned than us uh, about the sustainability of uh, 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 the international support. So it is important that political work is done to resolve the crisis and to recreate conditions for people, for those who want to go back and not stay in the host countries to return. Uh, I think it is also important because a lot has been mentioned about uh, the economic uh, uh, situation of Venezuela that prompts so many people to go away. It's important to remember that it is, yes, an economic crisis, but it is a crisis compounded by other factors, including human rights violations and violence. So the comprehensive causes have to be addressed uh, uh, and uh, those efforts have to be supported. I would like to join Federica in thanking those countries that have made fresh pledges. I know it's always risky and incorrect to single them out, but I will. Spain, the United States, Italy, Germany, the United Kingdom, and Ireland mentioned specifically fresh pledges, in addition to all those that have pledged already uh, in different ways uh, to the response of this uh, uh, situation. The word solidarity has been perhaps the most mentioned 
in our discussions yesterday and today. I think this is good, and this is a testimony to uh, the extraordinary effort of the host countries, all of them, in the region. I think I would like to echo what the World Bank representative said, solidarity remains an empty world. However, if we don't uh, substantiate it with uh, uh, material uh, resources, and therefore, uh, 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 I'm happy that uh, we have some process now in train. I would like to remind everybody that at the next meeting of the Quito process, which uh, the Foreign Minister of Colombia has just mentioned in mid-November in Bogota, in parallel we will utilize this uh, opportunity to issue the humanitarian appeal, the regional migration and refugee appeal for next year. And I'd like to uh, echo what was mentioned by some of you. Let's not forget that the current appeal, I think with the pledges of today, may be a little bit better, but it's about 60% funded, hopefully. So we need to do better with the next appeal, and let's hope that the awareness that we have created through this conference will contribute to a better response. Get ready for pledges after mid-November. It is very important, and this is the short-term response. Then the long-term response uh, uh, is uh, in the context that Federica mentioned, uh, the support that all countries need more structurally, more developmentally, and for that, I salute very much um, the initiative to constitute friend, if a group of friends of the Quito process that hopefully will work with the host countries, with international institutions, including uh, international financial institutions, to prepare, I hope, a pledging conference or any other event which will be appropriate to really catalyze major resources for the next few years, assuming that this situation is not going to go away anytime, uh, anytime soon. And finally, uh, I would like to uh, say two more things. One is to add into the many thanks that we have uh, shared today our thank to Eduardo Stein, the joint uh, representative of uh, IOM and ourselves and UNHCR, who has really done fabulous work uh, to highlight the importance of the situation and address some of the difficult problems that host countries are facing and discuss with them the measures that they are taking to regulate this flow, measures that are always complex. Uh, we are always inviting those countries to adopt them in a humanitarian spirit and taking into account a burden-sharing, a responsibility-sharing spirit of the Quito process. Finally, to say that indeed, as some of you have mentioned, in December UNHCR will host together with others, um, will convene together with others a global refugee forum. Uh, this is quite a it's the first time that we have such an event. It will be a major event, uh, and I hope, I trust, that this situation will be highlighted also in that context, which will be another opportunity to talk about it uh, and to make it better known, as it should, to the international community. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. The, the privilege of being the last one is that I can use the very old cliché. Well, everything has been said, so I don't have too much to add, except two points. The first one is to thank Federica joining Filippo. Uh, it has been quite a very good cooperation, and uh, you did take your personal commitment to organize this conference before the end of your tenure, which is... Uh, in, a, in way of concluding your work, I believe in the best way because you have always been a very reliable partner, not only for the member states of the European Union, not only for the international community as a whole, but for those who are suffering from humanitarian crisis. I've been with you in several places and I want to pay tribute to your engagement, to your commitment, to your political leadership in this very sensitive political area. Thank you, Federica, very much. Having said that, I also want to uh, thank the countries in the region for their uh, presence here, for their engagement, for their commitment, and join Philippe in saying that uh, together, under the leadership of uh, Eduardo Stein, we will go on being there with you, not just in Geneva, not just in Brussels, not just in the conference, we'll go on being there in the field to support the people who are suffering 
and to support the host communities that have to face this huge challenge. And we very much appreciate your engagement and your cooperation with the UN system as a whole, and we look forward to the continuation of this cooperation in the next uh, Quito uh, process meeting. I think that there are two messages, strong messages from this conference. The first one is the visibility of the situation. There is no excuse now for the international community to say that they did not know. No, the situation is extremely serious. It's an emergency, and we very much welcome the pledges and the, the declarations of support for different, from different countries, different international institutions, to support the countries in the region. And I think that the second strong message is that we, should, we are very much aware of the fact that there is a need for a political solution for the situation. But the fact that there are difficulties and obstacles to getting to the political solution should not be used as an excuse for not doing what has to be done today, now, tomorrow. And what needs to be done is to plan for the next year impacts. And that's the importance that Philippe mentioned of the, the plan for 2020 that will be presented uh, in uh, Bogota in, uh, in November. Well, to use a very well sentence, I'm afraid things will become worse bef be before they become better. And we need to prepare for the uh, deteriorating of the situation in the months to come. But the second idea, strong idea, is that we need to start planning for the long-term integration solutions of the migrants and refugees of Venezuela in the neighboring countries. And it is very encouraging to see how the countries in the region are open to that possibility. And they see the positive sides of integrating them and making the Venezuelans contribute to the progress of the uh, host countries and the receiving communities. And also to plan for the day after. There will be one day a political solution. But that political solution will launch a very demanding process for the day after the political solution. And I think that it is our obligation, joint obligation, not to consider that the political solution on its own will be the solution. There are a number of things that need to be start being prepared now for the day after. So to conclude, I will say that I want to thank the teams from UNHCR, from the External Action Service, from uh, my organization that have set up this uh, conference. And once again, thank you so much for having been here and having shown your commitment and your support. Thank you. So this concludes our two days of conference, uh, but I would say that the main message is to be continued. Thank you very much uh, to all of you.